Okay, so I'm streaming right now, but I will screen share on Discord too for you, so you will get okay. it like live, and then my stream is on like 30 second delay or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Just turn on the screen on the stream. This is not a healing drink. Doesn't help at all to think. Alright, so let's just start right off the bat with your runes. Just the most simple things at start, okay? Mm -hmm. Your runes this game is already wrong. You're having Iri and Resolve. Most of your games I see you go Iri Inspiration, which is correct. Yes. Um what made you go Resolve second this game? Uh, well, I wanted the um, the rune that like gives health back after taking damage, and since mm -hmm. like Mouse has a multi tick poke, I was thinking that it'll be refreshing for a lot longer, like uh, 1.5 times the amount of healing from that. So that's like my uh, reasoning for going resolve secondary. Yes, but if you want sustain, you could also go inspiration second with time warp tonic and go corruption potion. You does know? Time Warp Tonic still give extra healing? I thought it just does half of it instantly. It's uh, still beneficial to go. Mainly what they removed is the movement speed part, and that uh, it doesn't um, make Elixir last longer. It is still a good rune. Yeah. Like, I still use it on Vagar, because okay. I go Corruption Potion on Vagar. Yeah. Okay, well... So. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, in terms of your runes, you can go Iri, Mana Flow, Transcendence, which you did. But you can mm -hmm. go Scorch, but you can also go Gathering Storm. It doesn't matter too much. Also, did yeah. you first pick Oriana, or did uh, you pick Ori into Malzahar? Uh, I'm pretty sure I picked it into. Do you play Corky? No. Alright, because Corky is really, really good into Malzahar. Yeah? I was thinking yeah. of picking up Corky with the crit changes. Yeah, he got indirectly buffed due to the crit changes. It's also really good versus uh, Zoe and uh, Galio. So, Corky mm -hmm. is definitely worth picking up right now. And the reason why he's so good Oh yeah, because is... Zoe and Galio are... Yeah. Or Galio used to be pretty good, but... Uh, yeah, he's Zoe's still like, like okay. Right pretty... yeah, people and yeah. the rest... Like, people overrate the buff uh, nerfs. They're not, like, too big. Mm -hmm. He's still playable, so... Corky is oh, also, good. I made a huge mistake with my uh, sums. Uh, I haven't played against a Malzahar ah, in a yeah, while, yeah. and I took cleanse into him, yeah. yeah <laughs> I forgot about that one. Should I have a heal here? Mm -hmm. um, is heal the right move? Because heal is usually like, heal over barrier. Wouldn't that be mostly for 2v2s with the jungler? And if it's like a Nasus who kind of just wants to avoid and just like free farm uh, until he's like fed. The only burst you're going gonna... to... Only burst you're gonna negate here is the lead scene burst with barrier, so heal is still good because it also gives you movement speed. So it lets you kite better mm -hmm. too, you know? And in yeah, team fights as well. Heal is more permanent rather than barrier, which is yeah. just like momentary. Uh, like if you were sure. versus something like Fist, you could go barrier or exhaust. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. In terms of your mm -hmm. adaptive runes, you see those rune stats? Yeah. Uh, those uh, AP ones are good, but you should go MR. I really dislike the health thing, because if you look at it, it's 15 health, level 1, and 8, mm -hmm. 8 MR is going to negate more than 15 health, easily, you know? Yeah? Yeah, like, mm -hmm. really quick. 8 MR is huge. It's a lot. Yeah. Like, I legit don't know why people value the health thing so much, 15 health is really nothing, and I know it scales to 90, but 90 health late game is also, like, nothing. Yeah. It doesn't matter too much. Like, 90 health in early game would be a lot. But mm -hmm. it's only 15. So you're gonna easily negate 15 damage. You're yeah. probably gonna negate close to 15 damage with one Malzar E. Just by having 8 MR. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I understand. So that's that for your runes. Your build is fine. You shouldn't complete Morellos that quickly though. You should just sit on the magic pen. Really, okay. I was talking to um, another guy on the mentoring server, and he was saying that like rushing Morellos is still really, really good, like from Oblivion Orb, it never because was. of like the extra stats that it gives. It never was good to rush it. It never was good. Never. Wow. The healing reduction is oh. uh, really useless, especially here. 
Like, you are yeah. paying so much gold for the healing reduction and a little bit extra AP and health when you could have spent yeah. similar gold on something else. Like, you could have gotten, like, 60 AP and getting closer to your Rabadons, or you could have bought a Haunting Geist, which would increase your damage by 10%, and give you AP and HP that the Morellos would give you. Yeah. For so the I should just gold. wait on the Oblivion Norbert, get something else, like here, uh, I went for the Banshees. Uh, yeah. Against, like, uh, Lee. And then just wait on it until I can finish, like, other items and then complete it? Or do I just, like, sell it late game? The, yeah, you will complete it later on. You don't sell it. Yeah. It's It'll be just later. Yeah, you just upgrade it later. Like, on champions like Carthus, you can rush Morellos, like, instantly because one, healing just fucks you completely. And two, you yep. mark five people with your ulti, like, guaranteed. So you're using five people's healing. Mm -hmm. So on Carthus, it's, like, worth to rush Morello straight off, like, a lot of the time. As long as they have, like, some kind of healing. But on other champions, yeah. then it's not worth it. You need to be versus okay. something like Vladimir or Soraka for it to be worth. Yeah. So, I think that's it for your build. Everything else is fine. Okay, so let's go into the VOD. Okay. Now, the jungle... When you're playing mid lane, once you start getting into higher elos, it's less about your mid lane matchup and more about the bot lane and jungle matchup. Because mid lane isn't gonna be a 1v1 lane in higher elos. Yeah. It's gonna be mostly deciding on jungle and uh, supports. So here, they have Nami, she's not gonna be able to roam. You have Soraka, she's not really gonna be able to roam. So you're not gonna have to worry about that. They don't have things like Pike or Alice or Refresh. Now Lee Sin is gonna be extremely active in this game. Here, they are not mm -hmm. going to level 1 invade you, and if they do, there's no way your team gets caught. So yeah. you want to be the leader of the team and ping your teammates where to go to cover. Like right now, they could go... Do you see where Kennen is? I'll go on full screen, actually. Yeah. yeah, so right now, you see my cursor? Yeah. They could go through Tribush and this pathing, and then they could flank Kennen. Mm -hmm. You know? So you want to be yeah. standing where Kennen is standing, and then pinging him to go to top Tribush. Yeah. You know? Because okay. you don't want to stand three people in this bush unless you're all five doing it. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right now, if they come as five people, you guys are just gonna run anyway, so what's the point of having three people here? Yeah, you know? there's no point. Yeah, there isn't. So, right here, like this, standing here is no point, so now when you've already done this mistake, you should just queue one of them for an easy mana flow stack. Yeah, that's that's what I always try to do, uh, like before minions come, I just try to like stack up my mana flow. Yeah, that's good. You can do that every game unless they have something really scary level 1, like Brom Q or something. Yeah. Then you can only do that as long as you're 100% safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now your goals for this early game, since you're versus Malzahar, you don't want to rush QSS on Oriana, because one, you cannot build it into anything, two, it is not a competitive game, so you cannot rely on your teammates that much. So rushing yeah. QSS puts you very far behind. Which is also mm -hmm. another reason why Corky is really good into Malzar because he can build QSS without it hurting him too much. Because he can actually yeah. build it into something. So, the only way you die to ganks here is if Malzahar flash ults you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, you need to make sure that you base before he is level 6, and then make Nasus come and force his flash. Like, just write to him, like, yo, Nasus come mid and just force Malzahar flash, we don't need to kill him. Just force yeah. his flash. Because if you know Malzahar Flash is down, you can play super aggressively. Because he cannot gap close without Flash. Yeah. That's every game when I play versus Malzahar, I need to force his Flash before he's level 6. Otherwise, you're 100% dead, because there is no counterplay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Alright, so right here, we have Sin Lee Sin covering bot side now, the entire time. Nasus is starting bot side. So what should you do now? Where should you ward? You need to ward... Uh, I should be warding yeah, top side brush, right? Yes. Why? Uh, because if he does gank, that's where he's gonna, he's, that's where he's gonna come from. 
Mm -hmm. And why wouldn't you ward both side? Uh, because the own... Well, I guess he would have to... If he starts Q and then goes second into W, you would need to get level 3 before he starts ganking. And he can't get level 3 just from like staying... Well, he can't get level 3 from staying bot side, but it's not a very, very common uh, like path. He'll, he'll be most expected to go red and then probably wolves or something. Well, Pro, he, he, um, could go, he could go red crux and then bot crab and then just gank mid to path to top crab. He could do that. But so the reason mm -hmm. why you want to work top push here is because your own jungler is starting bot side. So he is kind of like a living yeah. ward, you know? Like if Nasus is yeah. on crab and we don't see Lee, we know he's like top side, you know? Yeah. Or, or we know he's not bot side at least. So that's why you want to work top side. And then you mm -hmm. want to play towards your vision or towards where Nasus is. Oh, yeah. also, isn't um, bot side pixel already warded? Mm, yeah, but it got warded like super early. It will, like, look, it oh. expires around now. See? There. Yeah. So it's not useful at all. You need the pixel to be warded at 2.15. Because at 2.15, the scuttles will both show on the pixel ward. Yep. Yeah. If a pixel doesn't reveal the crab at around 215 to 217, then that crab is being taken. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. So right now, Nasus is very vulnerable in the early game. So, and Mazar Bay player is really weak until he's around level 5 or until he has lost chapter. So yep. you want to create priority here and just focus on poking him and hard shove so that you're able to help Nasus. Okay? Okay. Your goal with helping Nasus is not to kill Lee Sin, you're not gonna kill him. Because Nasus is just so weak early. It is just to force him away from Nasus to let Nasus farm. You know? Because you have no yeah. real intention to stay as a level 1 or in lane anyways. Like, after you pushed, so... Okay? Okay. Okay, so right now we know Lee Sin started red buff. You need to ping that for your team yeah. every game. Like I said at the start, you need to try to be a leader. Like even if they don't listen, there will be like one guy at least listening. You know, and every ping you do, even if your teammates don't listen to the pings, it still makes them look. You know, yeah. so you give them an option to listen. It's their choice whether they want to listen or not, but at least you make them not autopilot. You yeah. know. Everyone reacts if you pings, like even bronze. So you just ping there and you write in chat, Lee started red. Yeah. Right now it is pushing towards him just slightly. So right now you want to start hard pushing. Okay? Because mm -hmm. Ori, before she's level 2, she doesn't do much damage with her poke anyways. And you gotta be able to get a QW off before it hits turrets. So, there's no reason to slow push here. Because you need it to be pushed so you can help okay. Nasus. You know? Lee Sin is now either on his Krugs yep. or puffing to top grab. Okay? Those are the yep. two options he has. And look to poke him every time your mana flow is up. Good. Back off now. The minions are aggroing. Wait, did you do you level up with clicking? Yeah, I do. It's yeah. it's a really bad habit, but yeah, uh, yeah, you need to get rid of there's that. Like, I used to do. I that don't know. Too. Is it control Q like control Q W E R? Mm -hmm. It's control. Cause I don't know why. my it's gonna block. I don't know why, but uh, like using uh, my fifth finger to like press um, control is just extremely awkward. Because of my like uh, elbow position, like, where do you keep your elbows when you're doing this? Like, is it, um, like almost horizontal or is it vertical with the keyboard? Uh, vertical. It's like uh, perpendicular to the keyboard, like layout. Yeah. Oh, 
and you can yeah, just use your middle finger. Yeah, that actually feels a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah? My yeah. middle? Hmm? You, no, your little finger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your pinky. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I have a couple bad habits that, like, I still haven't, uh, like, fixed. Yeah, you gotta fix that For because example, it becomes... For example, one of them is, like, block screen. Oh, you play block screen? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta fix it. I do use, like, I do unlock to, like, see other lanes or, like, check out other things, but, like, for the most part during laning, I'm keeping unlocked. Okay. Yeah. Well, you gotta fix those habits because those are both yeah. really bad habits, but it's good that you unlock it at some times. But uh, what mm -hmm. I, the way I play is, so, like, I've played a lot of jungle on, like, hidden accounts and stuff, so I know jungle pathing, like, really well. So I will always have my screen towards where the enemy jungler is, so I can see him as soon as possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can also just, like, rebind it if pressing control is really awkward for you. Yeah. I was thinking of maybe, like, using space. Because then space is really, really easy to use, because I use, um, what's it called? Uh, alt for, like, uh, self-cast. Which, actually, what I haven't you... been using for a while. I what? haven't been like self casting for a while. What I what I used to do is like I would click on my like I would put my cursor over my character and then mm -hmm. press E on Oriana to like to shield. But uh I've been like working on that habit, so I'm doing like Alt E now. But in terms of like uh like other key bindings, I don't know. It just feels like my, my hand is very, very um like limited in this movement. Yeah, there are a couple bad uh, this Vega V2 Hold on, I just got a sub. <laughs> Thank you for the sub, King Laps. Yeah, there are a couple bad habits that a lot of League players has, like having locked camera, not leveling up spells using control, uh, not being able to use F keys. Um, uh, what? There was one more I was gonna say. I don't think that one is too important though. Uh, yeah, the one you said with like the self-cast thing, but that doesn't like apply to most champions. So you should just focus like mainly on playing with unlocked screen, and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, control like play to level fully up. unlocked. Uh, well, I use spacebar to lock it, but I just like spam spacebar. You know, like I would yeah. like farm a creep, move my screen to enemy, and then spacebar again. Like I press spacebar like all the time. Um, yeah, but yeah, you. I don't think there's a single person that plays fully unlocked. Like, you always lock your camera at some times. You know? Yeah. But you should just have a key to do it. And then just move mm -hmm. your um, cursor again to unlock it. You know? There's like okay. two different settings. So, yeah. But leveling with cursor is extremely bad because if you play champions like Zed and stuff like that, once you start learning those, Zed, LeBlanc, those that spike really hard at level ups, they have to go in as soon as they level up, you know? And then instantly yep. level up the spell to surprise. So if you have to like move your cursor to level up the spell while you're in the air jumping as LeBlanc, that's gonna be really, really awkward. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's gonna be a big, huge difference in some fights. Like right now, do you see the second wave, the third wave that's coming? That's gonna be a kind of wave. You see that? Yeah. Is on the second turret right now, here. So, what I said that you had to do, is you needed to hard shove. Because if you don't right now, then it's gonna take a long time until it slow pushes back to you. You know, you need to crash this wave. Yeah. Otherwise, the wave is gonna be stuck in front of his turret for a while, until pushing back to you. And in that window, Lee Sin can easily gank you. Yeah. You know? So here, you mm -hmm. just have to hard shove. But you don't do it, you see? You're not using your spells. Like here, you could just Q this one and auto this one. And then you have to walk up to him. But you see, you don't push fast enough. You see? You don't need to poke him here. Yeah. You need to shove it. Because you're not gonna kill him. Until you're at level 6 at least. So it's a lot more important. And like here, you see that what I said about the wave? Look how it is now. Yeah. Like this yeah, is yeah. good for you in like 30 seconds, it'll be good for you. But now Lee Sin does have the option to come and just fuck you over and make you lose cannon. 
Yeah, and I mean, that's true because this is like the timing where junglers are starting to like gank after level three, right? Yeah. It's about like 240. And so junglers are finishing their fourth camp and like going in like, uh, like doing stuff around the map. So yeah, just is it just see... about like learning the timings? Yeah. Like you just generally don't want the wave to be in that position when the cannon comes. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because you're going to get ganked at that timer. Yeah. Uh, I think yep. we saw him here though. I want to see what buffs yeah, he has. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he has double buffs. Yep. So he went red into blue. Okay. And then now he's doing top Straight grab. Into blue. Yeah. yeah. So now he's 100% looking to gank. He's going to either gank top or mid. And another thing I noticed with you is that you don't ping anything. You know? Like you just ping like blue ping here. You need to spam ping cannon. Like, yeah. you're going to get people to say, Oh my god, Ori, shut the fuck up, stop spamming. But you shouldn't yeah, care. Yeah, that's what I've noticed. I mean, like, in, in solo queue at least, when I, like, spam ping something. Like, I, I used to be, like, the type of person to be, like, spam pinging, spam pinging, like, a hundred times. Mm -hmm. But then people just mute me. So I can't communicate anything anymore if they just mute me. Yeah, you can ping, like, three times. You know, like, this... Yeah? Yeah, this blue ping, for example. Like, hold on. That one is, like, useless. You know? Yeah. It's good that you type Lee River though. That's good. That's good. Because this also goes back to the thing I was saying that even if they don't listen, you at least give them the option to. Yeah. You know? Like you're making them not be autopilot. Okay? So now you just leave the wave. Now you only focus on um, poking him. Okay? Because this, mm -hmm. when the next wave comes, if you're only last hitting this one, it's going to bounce back to you. And Malsahar is bad, so he's just gonna automatically shove this. Like, let's yeah. just watch, just watch Malsahar now, I bet you he's gonna be hitting the minions. Yeah, look at him. See? Yeah. So now it bounces back to you. So all you need to do now is last hit and focus on poking him. You see, like, mm -hmm. you're so scared right now. We see Lee Sin on the map. Now I want to see you play super aggro. Okay? You have to be in his yeah. face right now. Because this is your opportunity to like hard fuck him. Because if you make him really low right now, then you can set up a freeze over here. And then yeah. Nasus can come and blow his flash. And then you are ungankable for the next 5 minutes. Because then he can't yeah. flash ult you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's see what you do. Hopefully you're not hitting the minions. Yeah, don't do that. Only last it. That's bad. Don't open yourself up like that. You want to poke him when he's focusing on doing something. Like here. You see this cannon? You can yep. stand like here. Because he has to walk into auto attack range. You know, so if you stand here, you can easily Q him. But you wasted your Q. Yeah. You see? Like the HP of this one, he's not gonna last it yet. You know? So you want your mm -hmm. Q to be available when he's going to last hit it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because otherwise, he's gonna dodge this one, and then he's gonna last it for free, and you're not gonna be able to punish, because you're not gonna be able to W him without your Q up. You need to play around your ball cooldown. So like right now, how are you going to punish him? Exactly, yeah, you can't. True. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this is really, really bad trade. Yeah, now you need to trim the wave a bit. But you also need to punish him when he's hitting the minions. Because he cannot punish you back. You see, like, that's Q is also wasted. Yeah. Like, you're not playing, like, Vagar, who can use spells on minions. You're playing Ori. Last hit with autos and poke with spell. Good, and an E back. Ah, oh, you missed it. This is good now. You should ping to gank here. This is what I was saying. Like now, he's frozen here. If you're only last yeah. hitting now, then he has to like hard shove. Otherwise he will keep frozen. So now you have to be in his face and just keep QWing. And use your potion. You're not gonna regen all this HP. Like here was a good example of the level up thing, watch. Here you're level 4, 
you know? Here, you could instantly... Yeah, I could instantly Q. Yeah, you could instantly level up and then hit him with Q, and you would do, like, another, like, yep. 20 plus damage on him. Mm -hmm. There, now you just need to keep the wave here. You need to keep pressuring him now. Okay? You have a good amount of mana, so right now you want to force him away, and then drag the wave over to here, so that this next wave has time to come, and then the wave is stuck here again. Yep. Giving your Nasus more time to come and gank. And this, having the wave here, if it's slow pushing towards you, means that you can move as well without losing CS. Because the enemy mid will always lose more than you if he moves, yeah. if it's pushing towards you. Because he has <laughs> more minions, so your minions will die faster than him. Okay? What do I think about yeah. the Vagar player, Vagar V2? I think he's a bit Hold on, I got a donation. Alright, yeah, sure. love you, Marius, you W, you cancer, P. Yeah, thank you for the $1 donation, King Laps. I love you too. <laughs> yeah. So here, like, he's not gonna get these two creeps because his E does like nothing. But then you walk back, you know, you need to know what he's going to do. You need to look at your own minions' HPs. It is really easy to get like really high elo laning if you just look at your own minions HP as well because it lets you know what the enemy will do like here yeah. he just eat it like I said until Malzahar is level 5 his wave clear sucks it's really shit so this one he needs to auto this creep for it to die or queue it so if you walk up here and start trading with him not only do you drag the minions over here which will set up the freeze again you also damage him and you force him to have to Q you if he wants to trade back. And if he Qs you, he loses these two creeps. Yeah. And since his E is on cooldown on his minions, his Q does nothing. Because Malzahar, do you play Malzahar? Uh, no. I rarely do, because... Uh, yeah, I just never like got to play him. Okay, well basically, so... He can refresh his E on a target if he hits you with Q or R. Okay? So generally... Oh yeah, I, I know that, that mechanic. Yeah. So if he he is a minion here and then only Qs you, without you having E on you, it's not gonna do any damage. Yeah. So couldn't he just fork? Like if I if I walked up, couldn't he just like position his Q in a way to hit the minions and me at the same time? Yes, like this. Yes, but yeah, that yeah. would be still better than because then you would be trading back. Because right now you just walk up, you see, mm -hmm. and then you walk back into it. You know. Yeah. So now you're not even able to W because the silence. You could actually yeah. force this flash here. If you hit with your W. You know, you would just mm -hmm. run him down because he would be slowed. And again, if you forced his flash, you would be so safe at level 6. You know? Yeah, and if yeah. you played with uh, Dematerializer, like on Ori, uh, do you see my screen still? I'm on League right now, yeah. can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is my page for Ori. I will make it real quick. This is my Vagar page, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. This. Okay. Dematerializer is a must. Oh. In the second, you can go whatever. I like free boots, but yeah. you can go Cosmic Inside. Time warp if you want that, but yeah. Yeah, I usually go um, boots and then the CDR rune, the five percent CDR. And if I'm not going, uh, what's it called, boots, then I go like if if, it, if I'm against something like a uh, Zed, Vagar, uh, someone who can like you know, a hundred to zero me, then I go um, the stopwatch. Okay. I would not go instead of uh, stopwatch boots. versus Vagar, but versus uh, Zed I would, yeah, definitely versus yeah. Zed. Not versus Vagar, but versus Zed, yeah, it's good. The materializer you must go every game if you got this inspiration on the mage. It is such a broken yeah. item. Yeah, it is so broken. It's insane. Like right here, the next wave is a cannon wave, I believe. If I kept counting the waves correctly, we will see. Uh, yeah. It's a kind of wave. So 
right now on this cannon wave, you would have your demon materializer ready. Okay? Yeah. So you will instantly kill a minion. Okay? And that means you can instantly kill the cannon minion and you will also do extra damage to that creep for the rest of the game. Yeah. That is extremely broken because look at his HP and his mana right now, right? If you were to take a bad trade with him right there, like I said, if you just all in them here and force his flash and then you had dematerializer, you would hard push the cannon wave with the dematerializer. He would be stuck under tower with like 200 HP with no flash and no mana, and you would just recall for free, because of the materializer alone. Yeah. Then you come back to lane, with CS lead, tempo advantage, and summoner lead. Just because of one yeah. item. That you got from mm -hmm. a fucking master. Yeah. But, um, a question about dematerializer. When do I know, because I, I know like some people use, um, the dematerializer on like cannons to manipulate the waves and like make them push faster. Or, you know, um, if you're getting pushed in, like, you can materialize, um, a, like, a cannon to make it, you know, not push as hard. And also some people use, like, um, I think it's, like, four on the melees, two on the, uh, to, like, just make their wave clear better for the rest of the game. How do I know, like, when to use each? Okay, do you see my screen? Yep. Okay, so Twisted Fate, you want to use 5 on ranged and 1 on cannon. Okay, depending on your rune setup. Yeah. You can also use mm -hmm. all on ranged. The reason for this is then you will one shot the ranged ones with your Q. Without the materializer, you're not going to be able to do that. Yeah. Okay, if you go to standard Roa build. Alright, while somebody like Zoe. You can do one ranged, one cannon, and four melee, or one ranged, one melee, and four on cannon. Okay? Zoe can one shot yeah. ranged minions with no problem. So she doesn't need to use more than one on those. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if she wants to clear melees really quickly, she has to use four on them. The way I use the materializer is that I always use at least one on each minion to get the 4% extra. Okay? Yeah. For Vagar, I do always one on ranged, one on cannon, and then everything else on melee, because then I can WQ the melees without needing to put two points into W. Yeah. And I also get extra AP then from the cannons without dematerializing them. Mm. And then champions like Lissandra, you just want to use everything on cannon, except for one on ranged and one on melee. Same with Ori. Or you can do like Zoe. And put all on melee. Do you go dematerializer on Lissandra? I thought you go aftershock and then sorcery second. No, you go inspiration. Now mm. that you, if you want mana, you go Ludens. You need to go inspiration. Yeah. You can go sorcery second, but I on Lissandra I go inspiration with hex flash. Yeah. Oh yeah, because the hex flash and yeah, uh, the hex flash e. mechanic. Yeah. It's really, 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 really nice. But you can go Sorcery Second, but I don't do it. And I don't think it's good. Yep. I, I really like the Materializer. I think it's legit broken. Just the fact that you can control the wave in matchups where you shouldn't be allowed to, and in scenarios that you shouldn't be allowed to, it's just insane. Yeah. And it makes laning a lot less punishable. Okay? Okay. So here, you want to stop moving, like this is bad. We see cannon though. Yeah? Yeah, we see cannon though, but the thing is, like they already got the camp. And if you're looking at top lane, cannon will start to lose CS now soon. And it's not guaranteed that you guys get yeah. anything. So if you want to move for this, you want to move over here. Yeah. Okay? Because that way mm -hmm. you're faster to get back to lane so that you don't lose too much. And you come from a better position, because when you go this way, you see? Like like I said, this is just cancer. You know? Yeah. You don't get anything. You lost that you actually lost cannon, I think. Yeah. So you lost yeah, cannon for this. Um if you You can go check out my YouTube channel if you want. 
And I have some wads, they're mostly Veigar though, or Corky. But you will still learn a lot about way management and how I play. I rarely ever leave my lane. And if I leave my lane, I try to make it as most efficient as possible. Because you mm -hmm. really don't want to lose your lane because some stupid like jungle shenanigans. Yeah. So right here, you just want to make sure that you're here. And then you combo them. And then if you get a pick, you back off. And if nothing happens, you just back off. Don't sit and waste your time just because your team is. And here's another example of why Dematerializer is so good. Because then you could just Dematerializer the cannon. And then just come and roam. You know? Because that way it'll yeah. push Malzahar. And he will lose the cannon wave, like the entire wave. And you just keep him over here. Because it will push really quickly into his tower. If his wave doesn't have a cannon and yours has one. Yeah. So by puffing like this, you don't actually punish them from doing this. So as soon as this Nasus slow expires now, you just leave. Like now you just leave. Because Ergos is already on his way as well. You have to spam yeah. ping your team away. Because what's going to happen now is they're just going to run away. And then Lee Sin is just going to go back into the jungle and invade his red. So you need to return to mid here. Push the wave in and then go secure Nasus's red with him. You are yeah. losing way too much for this. This is not guaranteed kills. You only want to do things like this if you're playing shit like Talon. Something that has to snowball early. You know? Mm -hmm. You're Orianna, you don't need to snowball early. And this isn't even snowballing. Like, you would get more from just being mid lane. Because the chance of you guys getting a kill right now is nothing like this. It's not possible. You know? Yeah. So, let's look at your mana when you started this, okay? So, 280 mana, right? Yeah. When this is over, 167. So you just use 100 mana, you gain absolutely nothing. Right, so now mm -hmm. you come back to lane, you lost a cannon wave. And a lot more CS than that as well. Right now you need to hard shove this, there's no point slow pushing this. Only thing slow pushing this would do for like benefiting you is that you're able to punish him under tower. But... You don't have enough mana to stay after punishing him. You yeah. Because your W is really expensive. So you need to hard shove it and base. You don't want to base now. You see, it's too late. If you hard shoved, like as soon as you go back to lane here, if you just started shoving instead of only last hitting, you see, then you would get a recall timer. Yeah. But right now, you see the wave is already back into lane. So if you recall now, you're gonna lose an entire wave. Yeah, I think that's one of my like biggest, not like biggest, but it's like a huge weakness of mine. I seem to never be able to get a recall timers like properly. I seem to like never know like uh, what times I can uh, go back to base. And I always end up missing like a whole wave. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what helps against that? Dematerializer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Like that item is insanely broken. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now recalling is good because the next one is cannon wave. Mm -hmm. Ah, but then you stay. That's really bad. You're gonna die here, if it's good. There's no point watching the rest right here, because you're just out of mana. Like, you've already screwed yourself over. Now, this is, like, a very awkward scenario, because when you don't base here on the cannon wave, what happens is, like I said, you will be Oom, right? And when you are Oom and the enemy mid laner isn't, he can force you to stay in lane as long as possible. Because he will just endlessly keep the wave in the middle, right? Yeah. So then as soon as you recall, he will hard push it, because he has the mana too. And you can't stay, because if you stay, you're gonna be forced to stay the next wave and the next wave after that, and you're never gonna get a recall timer. Because okay. you're never gonna be able to show the wave. You know what I mean? So it's like constantly stuck here, because you can't do anything. You see? You're not able to get a recall timer. Because you don't have mana. So you had to base on that cannon. You finally get to base, which is really nice. Oops. 
sadly you can't freeze this. Unlucky. I was really close to be able to. Only last it is. You could have an endless freeze if you were a bit more lucky on the RNG. If the minions came to lane like one second later. Yeah. yeah. Now you want to drag these minions over to here. Because remember what I said about the flash thing? If he has flash up, you are 100% dead when he's level 6. So you need yeah. now you need to keep it frozen all the way until he doesn't have flash anymore. Okay? Yeah. Because if you didn't, even if it's silver game, he is going to flash ult you with Malzahar. So. Yeah. Let's see, when does he come back to lane? So right here, you need to make the minions aggro onto you. You need to, to go inside of them. Yeah. And then drag them over here. And I mean, it's kind of easy to drag minions when I'm Orianna, because I can just shield like... Yeah. Uh... A lot of the damage, but what if I'm someone like uh, like Corky, for example, well, and I Corky, can't like you know mitigate any damage. For example, if you're Corky versus Galio, you will have Corruption Potion, mm. so you would just heal up. And if you just make if you drag them correctly, you don't take too much damage either. Yeah. You see, like right here, e yourself and then drag them away. Because if you just keep them right here, it's just going to push you in. Yeah. So you need to drag them far away. Yeah, like, this is good, but you need to drag them. Because right now, if he pushes, like, it... just... If he pushes just a little bit, these ones are going to suicide into tower. Yeah. So you need to have them in, like, this pocket. Not here. Okay, Broski? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you see? Like, now they just, like, kill themselves. Yeah. Yeah, you have to hard all in the mirror. No. Cleanse, 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 cleanse is ignite. Cleanse is ignite. Oof. Okay. You know you can cleanse ignite, right? Yeah, I, I know you can do it, but uh yeah. if you did you wouldn't die. I don't know, sometimes I forget because it doesn't because like cleanse I usually associate with like uh getting rid of CC. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's kind of hard to associate, like, Ignite with uh, Cleanse. And I think he cancelled his ult there. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he would have killed me for sure and, like, lived if he hadn't, if he hadn't cancelled. Yeah, but Lee would need to ult you if you Cleanse Ignite. And you're not going to have the Cleanse for his ulti anyways, for Malsar ult. So, there was no point keeping yeah. it up there. And after a play like this, you need to push. You don't want to run away like this. You need to just focus instantly on hard pushing. And don't flash this. Like right now, just straight away, as soon as this one re aggroes to me, like here. See, now it's aggro on this one. You just have to hard shove. And again, level up your spell. You see? Like you're casting spells without leveling yep. up your W already. Because what happens now, if Lee Sin is good, he will hold these minions instead of taxing them, and then it will be a freeze, and you will get ganked. Okay? So in a scenario like mm -hmm. that, don't flash away, just clear the minions. Mid lane is all about wave management. That's why, like, if you watch my VODs, you see I have, like, really high CS most of the time. Because I just value waves so much. They are so important. Yeah. Also, um, a question about anonymization. 
Here I go for the uh, Sork Pen boots, mostly because, like, since uh, Malzahar has, like, good wave clear by now, uh, I want to be able to, like, get to lane after a back as soon as possible to, like, try to, like, miss as little as possible. Would it be better to just go normal boots, um, Blasting Wand? Instead of, like, Sork Pen boots? Let's check. So I have my own spreadsheets of AP scalings. I don't think Ori's AP scalings are that big. Yeah, magic pen is better. Yeah? Yeah. You will also do more damage to him. Your uh, auto attack on your Q doesn't have very good scalings. Yeah. So it's not bad. For example, Syndra as well. Magic Pen is really good. Also gets you movement speed. And if you have more movement speed than Malzar, it's not able to walk up and ult you. Yeah. Also, I think your W is percentage movement speed? Let me see. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's true. Yeah, let me check real quick. Because if it is, then boots is also even better. Because it's gonna make your W give more movement speed. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's percentage. It's not like flat. You know, if it was like 60 extra movement speed, then boots wouldn't be as good. But since it's percentage, then... Yeah. Boots is good choice. Why does he have cleanse? Because he hasn't played versus Malzar in a long time. He knows you can't cleanse it. Good, his Q is on cooldown. You don't want to walk up too far though. Yeah. Like right now you want to stand in like this pocket right here. Yeah. Okay. But I'm because you could still like ninety percent sure that. Hmm. Hmm. What were you gonna? I'm, say? I'm pretty sure that Oriana alt has uh, like lower cooldown than Malzahar alt. So since my alt just came up, like uh, what I was processing at the time was that Malzahar alt is still down. So that, like, you know, there's no CC to, like, be holding me back right now if I do get ganked. Yeah, actually... I can just W out. Lee Sin is bot lane. Yeah, okay. Lee Sin is bot lane. It's fine. I thought we didn't know where Lee Sin was, but he was standing on top of um, uh, Lucian's icon, so I couldn't see him. So now we see Lee Sin, he was puffing to bot side. I mean, through, through bot side to mid. So now you need to hug top yeah. side. And you need to ping for assistance. Okay? Because in a 2v2 yeah. right now, you guys could win. As long as you guys play it like okay. Yeah? With yeah. Nasus jungle? Yeah. At this point, yeah. Like as long as you play it like okay, then it shouldn't be an issue. At least just ping for assistance so you can play a bit more harder than this. And you need to pop his spell shield. Because if he has his spell shield up, then there's no way you win. Because then you guys need to use the spell on him first. Yeah. Like there you could have... If you had your W up, you could have W'd to proc his spell shield. You don't want to check this. There's no point. Like right now, you should be walking... Okay, so we want to see how Malzar is playing. He's not holding the wave or anything. If he was dragging the wave towards where you are now, that means Lee Sin is here. But he's letting it go into turret. Yeah. If Lee was here and tried to gank you, Malzar wouldn't let the wave hit the tower. You know? Yeah. So just for his movement alone, you know Lee Sin isn't here. So now you want to spend your time to check for vision wards and clear vision, you know? Yeah, but that's like part of the reason why I went to go check dragon. Because, yeah, but this puffing... Like, Malzahar takes... isn't playing aggressive. Yeah, And but... so bot lane's also missing. So... But what does this ward I help just want, you like, with? Check dragon to make... if, if you know that they're doing dragon right now, right? If you see them do dragon, yeah. how are you guys going to stop them? Nasus is top, Cannon is top, right? Do you see the issue? Mm -hmm. You guys aren't gonna get the dragon. 
So why would you fight yeah. over it? And it's a mountain. You know? And you could also <laughs> puff like this if you just puff this way. And then you would also spot this pink easier. And like this war doesn't give you anything. Because you don't need to know that you're doing dragon, because you guys aren't in a position to punish it. So you're just wasting your trinkets. Yeah. So instead, where should I ward? Uh, okay. So let me pull up map. Alright, so right here would be a good one, because then you can see Lee Sin doing raptors, you get all this vision here. The warding here yeah. is bad, because then you don't see him doing raptors. If you ward right here, you will see all of this, you will see here, you will see here, and you will see if he pops down to red or down to Krugs. Okay, so you want to ward here. So your puffing should have been like this, walk here, seeing how Malsar moves, if he starts to move like this, towards you, when you start going to that bush, then don't go. Okay? Yep. But since he wasn't, then just face check here. Okay? And then... Wouldn't it be really bad to face check? Because we saw why? Lee Sin bot. Yeah, but he Because we saw Lee Sin bot a couple seconds ago. He won't kill you, 1v1. One one. So you just run away. Yeah, but Malzahar is coming. No, he wasn't. He was running to tower. Well, I mean, Malzahar is right there. If Lee Sin was coming, he could just uh, collapse. Yeah, but you would see by, and by this point movements. he has ult. Look, you will see his movement. He doesn't have flash up. Yeah. If he has flash up, then you should be scared. You know, because then he can gap close. He can't gap close. You see, he's like still under tower. Mm -hmm. So there's no way because if Lee Sin was there, right? He would be like walking up to you, like right here. You know? Because he sees you backing off, mm -hmm. so if he wants to gank you, then he should have already gone. Right? And then Malsav drags yep. you to tower, so there's no way Lee is here. So, the only way that if Malsav has a pink ward in this bush now, only way you clear it now is by going here. And that's risky, because now you don't know where Malsav is. You know? Mm -hmm. So now it is risky to check here. It wasn't risky earlier. Because Lee Sin can't 100 to 0 you. Yeah. He's two levels below you, so... So like now you're playing without much vision again. Because you wasted your ward at a dragon. Like right now you have mm -hmm. a lot of topside vision. So you could invest your vision towards topside so you could just perma sit hugging topside. Like you could ward... Um... Hold on. You could ward like here, for example, because you guys have mm -hmm. this warded, and you have this warded, right? So if you have this warded mm -hmm. too, then the only way Lee Sin could really gank you is through lane or through bot side. Because you have this warded, you have this warded, and this, you know? So you could just permanently yeah. hug top side of the mid lane, and then there's no way that you die because Mozart cannot gap close without flash. Alright. Mm. Now your goal is just to keep wave clearing to get gold. Could you get a pink? You go sweeper here. Why? Uh, sweep. I have no clue why I would want to go sweeper here. Okay, so you just bought it because you think it looks pretty, or? Well, uh, I guess since Dragon's coming up, I would want to have it. This is like, this game isn't like, uh, I think it was like about a week ago, so like exact like reasonings for why I, I did some things. Perhaps I forgot, and I used it for uh, red. Or the pink for red. Mm -hmm. Wait, is Malsar here? Fuck, is Malsar here yeah. for? No clue. I think his like ult came up. 
so and he just wanted to like, make some here. plays. There's a cannon man. wave in mid lane. Yeah. Okay, what's our flash? You need to time that. When there are flashes that will affect you, like really hard, you need to time them. Okay? So yeah. like Mulsar Flash, any Flash, like champs that needs Flash to kill you, you need to time them. Not just for your team, because they probably won't realize that you timed it. It is for you. So you time it and then you copy paste it as a reminder. And you just put it in chat like every time you're recalling or every time you clear the wave or something. Just to constantly remind you like when you have to be careful again. Mm -hmm. Okay, because right now you still have more movement speed than Malzahar. So, with your W, so there is no way to be ulted by him unless he has flash. Okay, so right now it'll be up at 1848. Alright, so hard shove this, get the plate and then base. Yeah, you need to work on your the way you're wave clearing. You see like your Q is missing some of the minions and your W. Yeah. You see that? You could be hitting this one. And you could have killed this one with your QW and an E back. And again you see like the HP of those minions, if you had dematerializer they would die. Yeah. Like, that item is so busted. So Lee Sin is dead right now. You're picking up your ball, which is good. You need to hard pressure him. But again, you put yourself in a position where you get queued. When he's he's not even trying to queue you, he's trying to queue the minions. Yeah. Now during this time you want to look at the wave, what wave it is, if it's a cannon and what it is. Because there's no point just looking at yourself here, you know? And if it is a cannon, how would I play differently from if it's if it's not a cannon at this point where there's no laner right now? Well, you would still just push it. It's just good to use your time for something. Look at other lanes or okay. just something. Yep. Because, like, right now, if you were to have dematerialized, for example, you could plan ahead. Like, okay, I'm gonna dematerialize the cannon or whatever you're gonna do. Like, right now, top lane is missing, Nami is missing. That's why I was saying, like, early on in the game, you need to know what the threats are. Because the higher elo you get, mid lane becomes less and less about the threat in your lane. Like, if you're against Zed and stuff, it matters more who the jungler and who the enemy support is. Yep. Because once you get that good that you start reaching like master and stuff like that, you're not gonna get solo killed anymore. So the mid lane matchup doesn't matter as much. You're only gonna mm -hmm. die if you get ganked, so you need to know how you're gonna play the ganks out. So like right here, let's say they had something like Kled or something, or Panfin, you need to be very careful. That's why. Because they could just gank you. Wait, did you even get the plating? Hold on. Oh, plating's just expired, okay. Yeah, then it's correct that you're basing here. You should be pinging for blue though. Even though you're basing, because then you could just stay for the next wave, hard shove it and then base. Yeah. Then you would have pink here too. Always be greedy for blues. Ah, that's good. Yo, Nas, let me next blue. Good. Good, this is a good sweeper, I was just about to say sweep. You need to be a bit more patient with your Qs. It's, uh, cause when you're just queuing off cooldown, it becomes very easy to play versus you. Cause then he can just bait out your Q every time, because he will know that, oh, as soon as I go in Q range, he will instantly Q. Yeah. Like, players like that, like if they're playing something like Seraph, and if I play versus a Seraph and he queues every time it's up, it becomes so easy to bait it. Because then as soon as I get into his max range, I know he will queue, so I just back off. And that way I bait it all the time. So you want to be a bit unpredictable. Okay, now see Lee in top, so now you want to pressure Malzar. Okay? You don't want to mm -hmm. roam to top lane here, the reasons for that is because he is going to get dove now, so what's going to happen is they're either going to insta-kill him, or he's going to kill him 2v2. Okay? If yeah. they've insta-killed him, what's the point of going there? 
nothing, right? Well, you might as well yeah. stun mid. I was thinking like they can't insta kill him because he has ult as cannon, so we can just stun both of them, and so they'll back off. And so by the time they back off, I'll be able to get top side and help out. Help out with what? If they've already backed off, killing them, because they they wouldn't have like backed off that far. So we could just fall. yeah, we'll and we it. get nothing. Yeah, you get nothing. Exactly. So now you just lose CS in mid again. Mm -hmm. That's why I was saying, like, I never roam unless it's guaranteed. Because you just lost another wave and mods are good for free. Because you need to abuse the fuck out of the enemy laner when the Lee Sin is in other lanes. Like, right now you can just straight up, like, be in his fucking face as soon as you saw Lee here. You know, because he's yeah. stuck under the tower right now with a cannon wave. You know? So you would just pop your potions and just combo him and ult him and everything. Because then that way, on the next wave, you would force him away. And you would pressure him so hard and you could take Lee Sin's raptors and everything. You know? You don't need to roam all the time. Because if you make the enemy mid laner really behind every single game, then that means that the enemy is basically playing 4v5 every game versus you. Yeah. Like, solo queue is all about being consistent, so roaming like this isn't consistent, because it's not guaranteed you get something from it. So, you're gonna end up being fed in some games, because the roams worked, and in some games you won't be fed, because the roams didn't work, and you just lost CS for no reason. Right? And you wanna be mm -hmm. fed like all games, right? On Talon, like I said earlier, on Talon, this would be a really good roam. Because one, you would get there faster, two, you don't wanna get to late game anyways. You want a snowball, so you need to do risky plays. But on Ori, you will win games just by having item leads and being fed off a of farm. Yeah. Um, like, here's my OPGG, right? So, if you look at my solo queue games, most of the games I'm doing good. Like, let's see how many off games I have. This one, it may look like I'm having an off game, but I don't look my support. He's 217. Oh god. Right? In grand was he ending? Like, yes, actually, like... yes, he was running it down. Oh. So that's why my score is bad, because me Jesus. and jungle and top, we were just trying to force good plays, because we had a guy running it down. Yeah. So when you have somebody running it down, you need to do risky plays. Because late game is no longer a win condition. Because you're not going to win 4v5 in late game. So. Uh, here is an off game. Here is an off game. So I have two off games in 15 games. Yeah. And then look at my CS, right? So 9.9 .9 CS per minute. Okay. 8.2, yeah. but that was an open mid, the enemy open mid. And then here 11.5 CS per minute. Here's a lost game where I have 8.9. Let me see my team. Yeah. 1 4, 1 7. My ADC is doing good, support is doing fine. Right? So my top side is like hard in thing. Yeah. And I'm still level 16 and doing good. You see? So it's all mm -hmm. about being consistent, because as soon as I get like some good teammates, I will win. Like all those games, because I won't be doing badly. Yeah. Both the games that I did badly in was already lost. Like this one was Reckless Fault, 100%. Like he was hard inting this game. You know Reckless? Do you watch Pro Play? <laughs> yes, yes I know Reckless. I was just a little yeah. bit uh, confused right there, because like, that's the actual Reckless. Yeah, he closed the stream after this game. My oh, Vagar got shit. banned because enemy team was ghosting, and he just rage quitted after this game. He was so shit this game. Like, we kept getting dulled bot lane and he forgot to auto attack them. So, I just gave up and perma roamed because I knew staying bot wasn't a winning condition. And then this one, yeah. me, Larsen, and Inspired, we were just trying to perma fight to win because Caitlyn and Trinomir was rage splitting. Mm -hmm. So, like, both my off games there was unwinnable. So solo queue is all about being consistent. Like here again, 11.5 CS, 8.9, 9.7 CS per minute, 8.7, 9 CS per minute, 8.8, .8, and this is with Predator, so here I'm roaming as well. So these two are games where I'm roaming a shit ton, and I still have good CS per minute. Yeah. Which means that every game I play on Vagar, I'm fed. Either through farm or through kills. And that's how you're gonna succeed in solo queue. Like if you look at Muggy Felix, Muggy Felix is a really good example of this. 
If you look at his KDAs, he barely dies, right? So he might seem like a KDA player, but he basically just tries to play safe and consistent. Yeah. And that is why he keeps getting high elo. His CS numbers aren't as good as mine, but he dies a lot less on his champions. Well, I mean, not a lot less. I die four times average on Vagar. He dies... 3.3, 3.5, but generally you just need to be more consistent in solo queue. It doesn't matter if you have, like let's see, like here for example, you lose, right? You're 6, 2 and 3, but you have 5.4 CS per minute. Yeah. You know, imagine if you had like 8 or 9 CS per minute, you would have another item, which means that you would maybe win another team fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like here you're 1 and 9, and if you were 1 and 9 and had good CS, then it wouldn't matter as much, because you would still be dealing damage. Okay, that's why roams like that are really, really bad. Yeah. Um, and something else that I wanted to ask that like kind of ties into it, was that when I noticed, like when I look at like high elo play, what I realized is that like, they're always showing up to the proper team fights. But they're still like having super high CS and like going to side lanes and like taking like jungle camps. I yeah. I have no clue because like what I feel is like whenever I go to a side lane, my team will just go all in four v five, and then I won't have any way to get there because I'm farming a side lane. So it's like I'm probably doing something wrong with like when I'm going to the side lane. Like, how would you be able to balance like playing with your team and also? Like going to side lanes, farming, and like, uh, like pressuring other lanes as well, like by yourself. Well, you want to look first at the enemy comp and your comp, right? So if the enemy team has hard engage, like Malphite and stuff like that, you don't want to go into side lane if the enemy is in mid and stuff. You know, because they will yeah. instantly hard engage in your team, and there's not much they can do. While if they don't have much hard engage, you want to also make sure still that there's nothing happening in mid lane like if the lane is just like this right and your adc is there already wave clearing go into side lane right because if your adc dies he has already cleared the wave anyway so the enemy won't get anything yeah but if they're already on the tower then you want to go because if you then go to side lane you're gonna get the tower and they're gonna start hitting the next one all right it also depends yeah. how easy you're able to get from the side lane to your team. Like, if you have teleport up, you can generally just go side lane all the time. Unless you're looking to start a fight. But when you're mage, it becomes a lot more tricky. Um, my kind of take on it is, I always tell people there are three different um, reasons why you're in side lane. You are either in side lane to split push for a tower. Champions like that would be Jax and Echo, right? Then you mm -hmm. have champions that are split pushing to push out and then go flank, like Lissandra. Because Lissandra doesn't want a 5v5, she wants like a 5v4. You know, to guarantee that pick on somebody and then win. Yeah. So she would like push side lane and then leave the side lane when somebody else shows up to clear. So that she could start a fight while you have a number advantage. And then you have champions like Vagar who wants to go side lane to deep push. You know, like a split pusher, just push the side lane, you go there as an immobile mage, push out the wave, and then group again. And yeah. that's what Ori wants to do. All yeah, right. but I feel like when I go to, uh, like, push out the wave, just like how you said with Vigar, just go push, like, go back uh, to your team. I feel like during that downtime, like that 20 second down, or more like 35 second downtime, where I'm not with the team, there's always, like, something that goes wrong. Well, then you could also push mid out first. So that if your team does get caught, the enemy don't get anything. Yeah. Because what happens then is you get a mid wave, and then you get like two waves top as well. And sure, the enemy team... The enemy team might get a kill on your teammates. But they don't get any objectives, so in the end it doesn't really matter. Because you still got more gold than what they did, just through farm and EXP. You can also be the one to push side lane first. And then go group. Yeah. Because if you're the one that's first to push the side lane, then the enemy will be in the scenario that you're describing. 
And you also gotta make sure to ping your team to be careful. But even though they probably won't listen. Now, like this point of the game, like the laning phase doesn't really matter too much. Like laning phase is basically over. Alright, so here you push. Soraka is not following you. So then don't do this. Play around your jungler at this point. Because if you clear yeah. this vision that they have here, you're not gonna get anything out of it because your jungler isn't here. So why does it matter that they have this push warded? Right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't stop you guys yeah. from doing anything. If Nasus was about to come from here, then yeah, you wanna sweep it. Because then they won't see Nasus. But Nasus is topside right now fighting Lucian. So you're just putting yourself at risk here. Nah, nah, nah. Like right here, your only backup is Soraka. Right? You're not gonna 100 to zero this guy. Yeah. So, don't, don't do it, because you're just gonna get pointed clicked by Mozart. Like right here, as soon as you in for that auto attack, you kill yourself. Yeah. So don't risk it, because as soon as you die, Ezreal's bot lane right now, you don't have any wave player, and then you lose mid turret. The enemies will not win the game if, like, this turret is up. They need to kill this turret to actually win. There's no way that they can kill all top turrets and an inib and an end through top lane without taking a single mid turret. It is, this is the most important turret in the game. The first mid turret. It opens up so much of their map. So the longer you keep this alive, the longer the game lasts. Like, is it... Hmm? Why is exactly mid turret that's like so important? Is it because if they push it and they get mid prior for longer? Yeah, you need to clear two waves while they only need to clear one. Yeah. And they can yeah. also move through the jungle easier. Like, Lee Sin can come from yeah. here, and then queue the raptors, and you won't see it. Okay? Okay. So you need to keep this turret alive as long as possible. Especially on mages. And as long as that turret is also up, you can just sit mid and farm, and then your bot lane can be side lane and farm. And then you don't have that uh, side lane dilemma where your team gets caught mid or something. That you were describing. Yeah. And if you were like alive here, you would be here for that crucial team fight. Like now, you could be greedy. Like if you wanted to like actually get like huge CS lead. Cause look at the map. Cannon is going for bot wave, right? Ezreal is mm -hmm. here. You've just pushed up mid. If you go to top lane now, you get this wave and then the next wave for free. And then Ezreal gets a solo far mid lane. Yeah. You should only stay mid here if you're actually able to get the tower, but you're not. So now, like, look at all the CS that is dying top lane right now. Mm -hmm. That you're not getting. So now you're just sharing farm with Estriel when you could have gotten two ways top, like solo, and then you would be here already now. Because you would get back here. So there was a good situation where you could go. Then again, you overstayed for Mother Ult. Thank God it's Soraka saved you though. That's a good flash. Woo! He is so close! <laughs> yeah, you got to respect Mother Ult. It is not your job versus like Malzar to start a fight. You have to kind of use your teammates as baits. Nothing you could do there to stop the Baron. Why do you back off mid wave? I mean, bot wave. Just uh, I know Ezreal is taking it. Ezreal, probably. Yeah, but yeah. He, sh he shouldn't be there. He should be mid lane. So just take it from him, yeah. force him to go. Are you a better player than this Ezreal? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you gotta be confident. 
So yeah. wouldn't it be better for you to have the gold than him? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta be selfish. Like, yeah, he gets gold from Kleptomancy too. So yeah, like you were closer to the wave than him. You see, like he walks all the way from base to here. Like, look, you're already on your way. If you were just spam pinging, you can also be like, kind of like a dick and say, let me for item. That's what I always do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even though you don't, even though you are nowhere close to finishing an item. Yeah, yeah, It is just to make them not like tilt from you taking it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they... I've had like multiple games, I would say this week, I would say maybe three games this week, where someone would ping me off a wave, I would go for it anyways, and they would just like flat out AFK, just give up. Yeah, but if you get in like a reason, like you're needing an item. Yeah. You know? The rest of this game is just Clown Fiesta. Yeah. Right now you just need to reset like your um. So like if a fight breaks out now, you're gonna combo somebody, and then you're gonna be um, so you're not gonna be able to double you and run away. So you're gonna have to win the fight instantly or you will lose it, because you're gonna be out of DPS. Okay, so now you just need to base. Taking these ones right now is bad, because you're wasting your recall timer for them. You see how long you take to clear them, because you're out of mana. Yeah. So you're gonna end up losing more CS by taking like these, because it takes you so long. Because you see, like mid lane right now, you're losing this wave. You saw the wave just died. Yeah. Watch. See? And you would get there in time if you didn't do Raptors. Grouping here is good because you're so far off an item. But then now when Urgot pushed top lane, now you have to be top for that CS. You see that CS? You don't want to yep. go for blue here. So close! Yeah. Ah, broski! No! Nah, but that's so bullshit. What? Look! Yeah, the heal went through as soon as I was uh, suppressed. Nah, it didn't make a difference. That's so fucking bullshit. Yeah. Nice company. Fucking shit game. Nice. That's fun. Don't type. Like, I know you're saying your fault, but you're making Soraka type. Like, look, like right now, she's recalling, right? Yeah. So, and then she's writing, like, my ban and shit, and then look, now she cancels her recall. If she didn't have to type, she would probably cancel it earlier, because she would be thinking more clearly. Yeah. And also the thing is, if you didn't rush Morellos, if you just had the magic pen, you would have Banshees gone, like, done already. Yeah. Okay. So, in teamfights, as a mage, Especially mobile mages, if you don't have flash, you gotta be a KDA player and just play super safe. Because mm -hmm. your main goal as a mage is to poke and to wave clear. Right, so if you die here and the enemy team wins the um, fight, the game is like over. Because you have no wave clear left. Like who is gonna wave clear? Cannon? He has to E inside the wave to wave clear. Yeah. Is Nasus gonna wave clear versus four people? Or three or two or whoever lives from T-Fight? No. Soraka? No. no. Estriel? Maybe. But his wave clear isn't any close as good as yours. Without his ult. Yeah. So yeah. You cannot be walking up here. Okay, so let's see what happens. Why do you lose this fight? 
Here is why locked cam is so bad. Right now your Soraka got hit by Lee Sin Kyu, and you didn't see it. Yeah. Because of locked cam, you know? So here, as soon as this happens, as soon as you see Lee Sin here, you got to run. You see, you're like walking into them. So now you just got insect. And you didn't cleanse the fear. So yeah. Like here, the only thing can tell you is to like learn to play without locked cam. Because that's why you got killed. Mm -hmm. That is legit why. Because your positioning isn't bad here. Like, well, you should be here. Instead of here. But it's not like you're over here, you know? It's yeah. just that you aren't able to reposition now because you don't know what's going on because you're in locked cam. So you just need to die. I think you should go for sideline here. Yeah. yeah, you see, like again, you're losing so much CS here. You need to, this is like what low elo players, no offense, don't like they do it yeah. so often. Like you need to realize the time it takes you to travel to here is now like 15 seconds if you're Wing and 20 with like without Wing, right? And is this fight gonna mm -hmm. last more than 20 seconds? No, it's not. It's not. It really isn't. The only way is if you guys are like chasing them. You guys are three people, they are four or five. Right? So you would rather push top lane, get that gold for free, or mid lane as well. Because if you do push out those lanes and your team wins this fight, because you're not gonna get there in time. So if they win the fight and you guys are pushing lanes, you're able to take objectives. That's also why like low elo games last so long, because people don't push waves. So they just keep winning fights, but they're not able to take towers from it because they don't have waves pushing. Bot lane is pushing towards you, mid is pushing towards you, top is pushing towards you. So if you guys win this fight, you're not able to get anything unless you ace them all, then you can get Baron. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. You need to put more priority on pushing waves. You see, you weren't able to get here. You weren't even close. That's why your CS is so bad. No, stop chasing. No, no, you're not gonna kill her unless she's fucking like walking up to you. Yeah. You don't want to go for like coin flip plays like this. You know, like she's obviously just making you waste time. Your Soraka is currently being chased by Lucian, and they could be just puffing around here now. You know? Or Lee Sin could be here or something, and then Q you and like insect you or something. You know? Yeah. And you killing Nami here, like it doesn't matter. And the way that you're gonna kill her is by her fucking up and not by you being good, unless you wanna flash on her, which really isn't worth it. Yeah. Like, she's gonna have to walk up to like here, for her to die here. You see, like it's not even close to hitting. So like right now, if your team was to do like one misplay, they would like all die. And here again is why locked cam is bad, because you're not looking like what's happening over here. Yeah, you've died in every single team fight so far, and it's yeah. mainly because of locked cam. And in team fights, you need to know your threats, right? So Malsahar is like your biggest threat here, if you just flash up. And then it's Lee Sin, and then it's like a flank from Urgot. Okay? And then it's like Lucian. Their lowest threat is Nami. Okay? The Lucian, yeah. the reason why Lucian isn't that big of a threat is because one, he is short ranged. Yes, he does a lot of damage, but you're gonna have to fuck up really hard for him to be the one hitting you. And if he is in range to hit you, it's probably because Lee Sin insect you or Urgot flipped you or something. And that's why Urgot and Lee are bigger threats to you. 
Lucian is a bigger threat to your team, so if you're able to hit him, then you should focus him. But it's more important that you stay alive. Yeah, that's a good ult. Stay in the redemption. Go mid. Stop waste time. Good. Yeah. Nice. Do you have any questions? Um, I guess what I wanted to ask was um, if I'm like looking for a roam, right? You were saying, you know, never roam until it's guaranteed. How can I tell if something is going to be guaranteed? How can I tell if something will work out? Is there any like, I don't know, like clues or like uh, hints that give away like, oh, mm. if I roam here, I'll be able to get a kill. Summoners, uh, what you have up, what your teammates has up. Like for example, if you have like guaranteed CC, right? Like let's say in bot lane, like if you have an Ash or Varus AD carry with like Leona support, then the only way that somebody who is bot lane does not get CC'd is if they dodge the Varus or Ash ult and then they dodge like Leona ult as well which is very unlikely that they are able to dodge both of those or they can yeah. dodge it by flashing away and you losing like a cannon wave for their flash is not really worth it you need to get a kill okay mm -hmm. so you need to make sure who has summoners and who doesn't but generally, like, if you just make sure you push out the wave first, then you can go roam, like, whenever you want to, unless you want to punish them under tower. We yeah. need to set up vision first, so that you're not face-checking into their jungler or something. So, um, if you look at my screen right now... Mm -hmm. uh, yes, X1, this is NA. So, let's just say you're Aatrox, yeah. Nobody plays Aatrox right now, but it's just the first champion I was there. Right. You push out mid, okay? You go ward. You ward the pattern that you're going to be roaming. If you're going to be roaming through here, you will ward this here with a vision ward. If you're going to roam through here, then you pixel, you pink this. Okay? Then you yep. push mid again, and then you go roam. Okay? Because that way it's the most guaranteed way. Because on your first little roam, which is kind of like a fake one, when you get to like here, the enemy mid will spam ping, and the enemy bot lane will already be like running away and shit. <laughs> you know? So you're already pressuring them and relieving pressure from your bot lane just by fake roaming. While in reality you're just setting up vision for yourself. And then when you're pinking, if they have vision, you clear that vision. And then that way, you know for sure that when the next time you roam now on the next wave, there is no wars here anymore. Yeah. So they don't know for sure if you're roaming. And if you're constantly going in fog of war, but not roaming, then they're just gonna think, ah, well, he didn't roam the last five times he was missing, so he's probably not gonna roam next time. And then all of a sudden, but forget, boom, double kill, bam, 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 bam. And they're like, what the fuck? Where did he yeah. go from? And then you're like, faker, uh, pentakill. Yeah, should I be buying, um, uh, what's the red trinket called? Whatever, Red Trinket, right? Yeah, just call it Should I be buying Red Trinket on um, champs that I want to be roaming on? Because, for example, like Pink, right? If there's a ward in the Pixel Brush that you're going to see me from, I can Pink pick Pixel Brush. But if there's also like a ward in the uh, the river, like the entrance to the river bush, or, for example, like outside Blue Bush, or, for example, right outside the uh, bot lane Red Bush, right? That's like four different opportunities for them to spot me before I uh, roam, right? So should I be like going and getting the, the red trinket as soon as possible if I'm going to be roaming? To like clear all the Depends vision? on your champion. If your champion can make picks easily too by denying vision, then yes. Like LeBlanc, Twisted Fate is really good on. You know? Mm -hmm. But Ori, no. Yeah. No. Not on Ori. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, don't think so. Okay. Well, I hope it was helpful for you and that it was yeah. worth your time. I wish you the best of yeah. luck in solo queue. Thank you. 
And if I ever see you with Resolve second on Orianna again, <laughs> I, I will find you, okay? Okay. <laughs> I will not tolerate this. Yeah. You are a lame bully mage. If you really need to stay in Go Corruption Potion, don't fucking go second win. Yeah. And don't finish okay. your Morellos. I, I don't I don't care who told you to like finish Morellos instantly. But it it is not good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really not worth it. Okay. Okay. Because you're buying the Oblivion Orb for Magic Man. Not for the AP or whatever. Yeah. If you want AP, you buy Needless Elite Rod. Because then you're also building into your Abaddon's. Finishing Morello yeah. straight off, you're not getting too much from it, and you're just delaying the rest of your spikes. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Alright. I will see you around, bro. Yeah, see ya. See ya. Bye.